going on Alex Bros? In this video, I'm going to show you how to find bounds on the zeros of a polynomial function using this function, f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 4. Let's first start with the list of the potential rational zeros. So I'm going to make a list for p, which will be based on divisors of 4, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4 and then a list for q, which will be based on divisors of 3. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So the potential rational zeros, p over q, are formed by using the uh, divisors p uh, as numerators and divisors q as denominators. So plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 1 over 3, plus or minus 2 over 1, plus or minus 2 over 3, plus or minus 4 over 1 and plus or minus 4 over 3. Okay, so we're going to apply um, a result of a theorem um, in our textbook is called the theorem of bounds on zeros uh, to figure out uh, what the upper bound is. We'll do that first and then what the lower bound is and what we mean by these two values are numbers on the number line for which our zeros will fall between. Okay, so we'll know based on our upper bound that we shouldn't consider any um, rational zero or zero for that matter larger than it, nor for a lower bound should we expect a zero less than it. So to start finding the upper bound, we're going to take our smallest positive uh, integer that is a potential rational zero. And in this case, that would be positive 1. And we're going to put 1 through the synthetic division process. So I'll put 1 in that little half box and then use the coefficients of our polynomial function for the numbers to the right of it. Okay, carry down the 3. Multiply by 1 to get 3. Adding down, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Multiplication by 1 again, this time to 1, will give us 1. Adding down will give us 2. One more round of multiplication, 1 times 2 gives us 2. And adding down will give us a remainder of 6. Now, um, what I want to point out is that the coefficients of the quotient polynomial are all positive values. In other words, these numbers right here are all positive. So according to the bounds on zeros theorem, it says if the third row in the process of synthetic division, so it's referring to these coefficients, contains only numbers that are positive or zero, then the number that we chose to do synthetic division with is an upper bound to the real zeros of f. Okay, since we got positive integers during the synthetic division process, i.e. the coefficients of the quotient polynomial, that would mean that one is an upper bound. So if we maybe think number line, put a tick mark for 1, I'll say UB for upper bound, um, our real zeros are going to fall to the left of 1. So now we want to think about, well, um, is there a number that the zeros would fall to the right of? And that would help us to figure out you know, between what two values can we expect our zeros for the polynomial function. So what we'll do next is check our largest negative integer that is a potential rational zero. And our largest negative integer that is a potential rational zero is negative one. And so I'm going to take negative one and do synthetic division with it. We'll still use the same coefficients from our original polynomial. 
bring the 3 down. Multiply it by negative 1 gives us negative 3. Adding these two down gives us negative 5. Multiplication again will give us positive 5. Adding down will give us 6. And multiplication by negative 1 gives us negative 6. And adding these two down, we get negative 2. So one thing I want you to notice is again referring to these quotient polynomial coefficients. For a lower bound, what we want to be on the lookout for are alternating signs. Okay, so the second part of the bounds on zero says if uh, m is a real number less than zero and if the third row in the process of synthetic division of f by x minus m uh, contains numbers that alternate positive and negative, then m is a lower bound to the real zeros of f. Now check this out. We start out with positive 3, negative 5, and positive 6. Our remainder is negative 2. Uh, which, by the way, uh, if you look at our remainder from using x equals positive 1, it's positive as well. Um, but taking a look at our um, resulting coefficients and remainder with negative 1, uh, we can see that the signs alternate, meaning that negative 1 is a lower bound. So on the number line, I'll put negative 1 and LB for lower bound. And now we have a better idea of where our zeros fall between. Since negative 1 is a lower bound and 1 is an upper bound, our zeros for the polynomial should be uh, between the values of negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so zeros are in this interval. Right. And you can use your graphing calculator to um, see that that would be the case. And that is pretty much where I'm going to end this video. Okay, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope you got to learn something about finding the bounds on zeros. Have a good one.